everybody. Welcome back to today's Bible study. I'm your speaker, JT O'Malley, 9681. And I don't really have a title for this one, but we will be in the whole chapter of the book of Romans in chapter 1. So go ahead and have a word of prayer at your leisure, and then we will get started on this Bible study. So just go ahead and have your prayer that the main thing about it is that God will give you the message through the Holy Spirit and not from any of our own understandings. So go ahead and pause the video right now and do that. Okay. Like I said, there's no title for this one. I don't have a title. I couldn't think of one. I'm sorry. So let's go in Romans chapter 1 verses 1 through 7. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of John this is Paul writing to the Romans which he had promised to forward by his prophets and the holy scriptures concerning the, his son Jesus Christ our Lord which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name among whom you are also the call of Jesus Christ to all that be in Rome beloved of God called to be saints grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ now what the Apostle Paul wrote in a letter was for the fulfillment of the promises by the prophets it speaks of Jesus Christ who is the Son of God typo why do I keep doing that and is the promised Messiah by the divine power of his Father in heaven who is the Almighty God which raised him from the dead down the family line Jesus was said through the prophets that Jesus would be a descendant of David the Christian profession does not consist in an imaginary knowledge or fairy tale but in obedience to God and Jesus through a faith of knowing the scriptures are true that's how it's always been that's how it should be if it's by anything else but that, then our faith is practically dead anyway. You can't have faith without the one who gives us faith. And if you don't have that real faith, it's because God has already known of you, and there's not much that he can do for you when you're not going to show that you even have faith or even want the faith. Now, there are a couple cross-references, and I have a little something after this too that explains these. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 9 God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Colossians chapter 1 verse 20. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say whether they be things on earth or things in heaven. So when we are born again, our heavenly father has called upon us to fellowship with him and his son Jesus. Not only must we fellowship with others, but also we should do the same with God as well by Jesus our father is happy to bring all the chosen and saved through the cross to him by Jesus shedding his blood and broken his body on the cross has made sinners who believe and submit their lives to Jesus to live once again all for the glory of our father in heaven in the name of God's son Jesus that is the whole thing about Jesus dying on the cross for us for our sins now let's go back into Romans chapter 1. Let's go to verse 8 through 17. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken throughout the whole world. For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, to the end you may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now I would not have you ignorant brethren that oftentimes, but was let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also. Even as among other Gentiles, I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, but to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me is, 
I am ready to preach the gospel to you that you are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the first Jew and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. What this is saying is that we must show love for our friends, family, and neighbors, not only by praying for them, but by praising God for them. As in our purposes, so in our desires, we must remember to say, if the Lord will. Our journeys are made prosperous or otherwise according to the will of God. We should be ready to give to others the good news that God has trusted to us. As we rejoice to make others joyful, we should take pleasure in fellowshipping with those who believe the same with us. If redeemed by the blood and changed by the grace of the Lord Jesus, we are together his, and for his sake we are chosen to do all the good we can for mankind. Such services are our duty. We must never be ashamed of the gospel to give the gospel to others but it must be given to those who will share it to those who do not know it the gospel is righteous as the whole bible which holds the teaching of the word of god and is righteous altogether all righteous people should live by faith you don't live to the will of god by going out and doing good things and and praising it all in the name of the lord that doesn't work. That's look. That is looking for human praise, because Satan can and will manipulate you into wanting that praise for yourself, and you will become envious and jealous. Doing the works of God is doing what God tells us to do when He tells us to do it, and then having that faith to go out and do it and not be scared to do it. That's doing the works of God. That's how God work, does His work through us. And then there are two other cross references to this. James chapter 4 verse 15, for that you ought to say if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. It's like I just explained. And also Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4. Behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. I had to kind of fix that down there because for some reason the rest of that actually got not included in there. So I had to actually f edit that up. And if you look up the scriptures, that is in there. Now, let's go back in the Romans chapter 1. Let's go through verse 18 through 25. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it to unto them for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and godhead so that they are without excuse because that when they knew god they glorified him not as god neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish hearts were darkened Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever? Amen. So what's going on here is that all mankind need the salvation of the gospel because none could obtain the favor of God or escape his wrath by their own works. The sinfulness of man is described as ungodliness against the laws of the first commandment and unrighteousness against those of the second. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto you any get graven image. The cause of that sinfulness is holding one's own personal beliefs of life as a truth which is unrighteous and against the word of God. And so many people do this today and they don't even know what they're even doing. All Gentiles do what they know to be wrong and claim what they know to be right. How in the world did I mess that up? So to make ignorance seem forgivable to God. 
Every single one of us who are tr truly with Jesus Christ, truly saved, truly been baptized, we all end up doing this at some point or another in our lives. Not one person can say that they never did that because then you would be a liar. This will not be allowed from anyone. Our creator's justly power and word are so clearly shown in the works he has made that even idolaters and wicked Gentiles are left without any excuses. They will foolishly follow idolatry and change the worship of the glorious creator for that of brutes, reptiles, and senselessness images. They have wandered from God. The gospel has proven and will prove in time of revelation that unbelievers who stay so wicked for their own foolish and selfish intentions will face the wrath of God when the time of judgment day comes. No matter how many wicked unbelievers try to excuse their behaviors, the scriptures tell facts, not lies. I've explained this so many times that I've shown the truth in the scriptures. The scriptures are all knowledge, all knowledge and truth. Those behaviors show plainly that men have dishonored God by the most absurd idolatries and superstitions and have degraded themselves by the most wicked worships and most abominable works. Look at what the world's doing today. Now let's go to the final stretch of Romans chapter 1 verses 26 through 32. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the women, buried in their lust one towards another, men with men working that which is unseemingly and receiving in themselves at recompense of their error, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to the retrobate mind to do those things which are not covenant, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, and whispers, backs, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, un, and unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit these commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So, because of the evil that is in the hearts of those who flat refuse to listen to reason and the word of God, the truth of God's word, shows in the past of Old and New Testaments and in modern time as we know it, light was coming to the world, but men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For he that does evil hateth the light. These are the words of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. The truth is not the taste of wicked people who love the evil of the earth. And we all know how soon a man will make up excuses against the strongest evidence of the truth to reason himself out of the belief of what he dislikes. But a man cannot be brought to greater enslavement than to be given up to his own lust. Women do the same thing. And children will do what they see adults doing. That's why we need to teach our children better and teach them the truth of things. As the Gentiles did not like to keep God in their knowledge, they committed crimes completely against reason and their own well-being. The nature of man, whether pagan or Christian, is still the same, and the charges of the apostle apply more or less to the state and character of man at all times until they were brought to full submission to the faith of Christ and renewed by divine power. Therefore, these scriptures are a call to realize where you are in spirit, the end of which is to come, a deep belief of your sinful lives and of the desire to be saved and submitted to Jesus and to our Father in heaven and his children in the name of his son Jesus for the glory of heaven and the Almighty who reigns there. So everybody, that's about it for this one. And we'll just have to wait and see what, what God wants me to do or what we're going to have next. And if you're not saved, or if you're having trouble backsliding, find yourself a solitary place and simply talk to Jesus about it. Let him know what's going on. He already knows, but he wants you to talk to him. Your father in heaven wants you to talk to him too. If you're not saved, tell him that you want to be saved. You need to have it within your heart, deep in your heart, that you truly want to be saved and turned. And if you're having trouble with your backsliding, talk to Jesus about that. Jesus will help you. Jesus will guide you. 
So until next time, this is JTML 9681 and our brother's Bible study in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen.